So we'll start the session. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us uh, today. Um, so first we'll uh, start with a short introduction for Indian Road Safety Campaign, uh, followed by I'll hand over the session to Ivy Rao sir, who's our host. Um, Indian Road Safety Campaign is part of SOL Foundation and is working towards the mission of making Indian roads safer. Uh, our focus is to reduce the number of deaths caused by road crashes. Uh, to achieve this, IRSC is working with 1,500 plus institutions and 25,000 plus volunteers across the states. Uh, and we work in various domains such as awareness, law, policy, medical, technical innovation, etc. We are also working in close association with Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, State Traffic Polices, United Nations, WHO, etc. The main reason why we started this webinar series is an effort to bring all stakeholders of road safety on one digital platform during this pandemic. Um, as uh, people who have been attending our webinars, uh, we have completed 16 webinars so far, and we have invited uh, experts from various backgrounds like universities, healthcare, ministries, corporate institutions, and we've also had participants from different sectors from all over the globe. We have had several prominent speakers like Dr. Eva Molnar, who was the former director of UNICE, um, Rashmi Udvarshi, director of ARAI, Abhay Damle, who was the joint, former joint secretary, Morth, and Piyush Tiwari, CEO of Life, Save Life Foundation, and Dr. Itin Krug from WHO. Um, we have been covering various topics uh, like um, the Mission 50 by 30, role of corporates, Good Samaritan guidelines, and trauma care. Today, uh, we are going to be speaking to Babni Lal Ma'am from Transport Research Wing to understand how the Transport Research Wing works. Um, I'm going to hand over the session to our host, Ivy Rao Sir, um, to, who's, our board of, who's from our Board of Advisory of India, Indian Road Safety Campaign. Um, sir, th please uh, take over the session from here. Thank you. Thank you, Swati. Uh, my hearty welcome to our guest speaker for today, Mrs. Babini Lal, all participants and friends. Good afternoon. I'm happy to host this webinar 17th in series. And uh, this particular episode will try to understand uh, the role of transport research in uh, MORTH and how we could make use of this for improving road safety. Uh, as uh, many of you know, I are SC is organizing these webinars with the different stakeholders to understand their views and decisions for making roads safer for users. Uh, still, some gaps exist in our understanding about the road accidents. Uh, to mention a few, there is no evaluation of uh, the accidents taking place every day to understand the reasons for accidents. Only records what we generally have are the I have police complaints which are basically made from fixing the responsibility of the accident and they do not help analyzing the accident. The vehicle users are still not very well aware of various features provided for the driver assist for safe driving. Uh, most of the research uh, surveys indicate very less usage of helmets by two-wheeler users and uh, seat belts by Transit car users, both drivers and uh, rear seat uh, occupants. Uh, and we can see this when, uh, I mean, uh, when we look at the accidents, in spite of India's considerable progress in all the five pillars identified by UN for reducing accidents and fatalities last decade, ending with this year. India has not seen any <clears throat> reduction in uh, the accident numbers or fatalities. We still are increasing trend. Uh, if you look at the how the road users respond, still many road users feel they are wearing helmets or seat belts in case of passenger cars only to comply with traffic rules, but they do not think it is for their safety. Even the severe penalty as per the Motor Vehicle Act has not brought any visible change in road users. <clears throat> so I feel this is the area where we need to work to bring in attitudinal change in the road users to follow rules and guidelines. 
Last week we had uh, Dr. Neelima Chakravarti, senior principal scientist, traffic engineering and safety research area of Central Road Research Institute. She spoke about often neglected parameter, the condition of the driver, influence of mental health on road safety. Uh, a few weeks back, we had Mr. Ravi Shankar Rajaraman, the technical director of JP Research India office, the only professional organization which analyzes the accidents taking place in some parts of India. He talked about the accident analysis and power of uh, information for improving road safety. He had guided us to contact <coughs> TRW, the transport wing of MORTH for accident uh, related information analysis. We are very fortunate to have Ms. Babni Lal from uh, Transport Wing of MRTH. She is the advisor at <coughs> TRW, the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, where she has spent last two years. She, she belongs to 1987 batch of Indian Economic Services. She has served in various capacities in the government of India prior to this and she was advisor in the Ministry of Textiles, where she was associated with drafting of DAP textile policy and several other studies. She also served as a director in the uh, Department of Commerce for five years and was uh, involved in negotiations on SAPTA for Australia, New Zealand, and West Asia region. She served in, uh, as director and deputy secretary in the Ministry of Finance, looking after state finances. She was also, she has also held various positions in planning commission, central pay commission, department of education, uh, rural development, expenditure, commerce, textiles, and finally transport research. She specializes in research, data processing and analysis in TRW. She is the author of four publications, including Road Accident Statistics 2018, Road Transport Yearbook 1617, Basic Road Statistics 2017, and Performance Review of State Road Transport Units for 2016 and 17. Uh, today, we are fortunate to have her here. She will be talking about the role of transport research wing in improving road safety. Uh, now, I invite Ms. Babni Lal to make her presentation and explain how TRW functions and how the data can be shared and how we can use it for improving the road safety. Over to you, Ms. Babnila. Thank you very much, Dr. Rao, for this introduction. And uh, good evening, friends. Today I'll be speaking to you on uh, what TRW under the Ministry of Road Transport and Highway really does. What are the challenges of accident data collection? What has been the response of Government of India in this direction? But before I begin, I would like to congratulate IRSC for this amazing effort. By bringing the views of various luminaries and specialists in the field of road safety available to us at the click of a button, you have placed a huge resource at the disposal of the uninitiated on the subject and taken a very big step in the field of advocacy. My heartfelt gratitude to you all for this yeoman service. Now I think I will return to the subject of TRW. Uh, the Transport Research Wing under the Ministry brings out four annual publications. Uh, these have been uh, just uh, pointed out to you. One is on road accidents in India. The other brings out the basic road statistics, the road length and the types of roads, etc. The financing of road structure. It's a very detailed and a comprehensive document. Then there is the road transport yearbook, which summarizes the vehicle position, the growth position of the registered vehicles in the country. Then there is the review, um, where a review of performance of state road transport undertakings. So these are the four documents which TRW brings out. The wing also renders research and data support to the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways for policy purposes and commission studies as and when 
necessary. We are currently in the process of finalizing the road accident report for 2019 and hope to bring out this report by the end of September, early October. Because of COVID, a lot of delay has happened in the receipt of data because state governments have been caught up with tackling co the COVID crisis. All our previous reports are available on the website of the ministry under the head of publications. So people who are interested can have a look at them. The road accident report briefly provides, and now I'll just talk about the road accident report. The road accident report briefly provides an overview of road accidents, giving data in respects of accidents, the number of persons killed and the injured for the period 1970 to 2018. We used to collect this data for a long time, but we started printing the publication only from 2006, yet the series is available from 1970 to 2018. Um, the report profiles accident by road category, uh, by the road user category, by the age of victim, as well as profiles the various causes, interstate comparison, accidents in million plus cities, spatial comparisons, international comparisons, and gives a brief recap of the initiatives taken by the ministry in the field of road safety. It is fairly comprehensive in terms of road accidents. So in short, the report actually brings out the size and the mag magnitude of the problem as it exists in India in its various dimensions. Uh, I will not delve on the findings of the report of 2018, as I have noticed from your web webinars that it has broadly been captured uh, in the webinar in the webinar given to you, the first webinar given to you by Mr. Giri Kumar, which was based on a report. And uh, there has been, it has also been talked about by Mr. Ravi Shankar of JP Research in the 14th webinar. The findings of the report are captured in the executive summary of the document, which is the first chapter of the document. I would urge everyone to take a look at it. People who have not looked at it, I think I do have a copy here. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. This is the road accident 2018. Um, broadly, we all know, I mean, with, with what sets India apart is the fact that uh, we are the country we are the last, we rank the first in terms of the country, in, in terms of number of road deaths in the world. We contribute to about 11% of the global fatalities happening in the country. So we are a very visible country on the world map in terms of road safety and whatever we do is closely watched. Uh, I will not go into the various findings of the report, as I mentioned, and uh, I will talk about uh, how data is collected by TRW. So accident data is collected uh, by TRW from state police departments in standardized formats as provided by the UNSCAP under the Asia Pacific Road Accident Database Project. These for formats have been subsequently revisited by the Committee on Road Safety experts, the Committee on, on Road Safety, which is constituted of experts from Delhi IIT. My, your professor, Gritam Tiwari, was one of the experts. Um, experts from IIT Kharagpur, DGPs of police, w, uh, WHO, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Secretary Moth and TRW. At present, we are collecting this information in 21 formats. And uh, 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 21 formats, and the formats broadly cover, I'll just tell you, uh, the formats bro broadly cover the accident identification details, the road related details, vehicle involved in the accident, driver details, persons other than the drivers and jurisdiction, uh, accident-related information, uh, jurisdiction-wise, national highways, state PWDs, uh, and state roads, and others. Uh, 
This information is sought from the nodal officers in nominated by the state governments, which are fairly senior level officers at the DIG. The nodal officers are at the le level of DIG and above for this purpose. Thus, the, thus what I want to stress at this stage is that the information collect is collected on accidents is collected by us in standardized formats and comes to us from very responsible levels of the government. This data is called for, the road accident data is normally pertains to a calendar year. It is from January to December. And we begin by asking for this information in the beginning of the year. And uh, it, the information is received by us normally by June, July, and this time it even went into August. Um, until last year, we were calling for information only annually, but now we have started to uh, call for information on monthly basis from the state governments. As a result of which, you know, this was post the implementation of the, you know, so that we can actually study the impact of uh, uh, policy that the ministry has initiated and other things like COVID if once we have monthly data. But the information in respect of monthly data hasn't stabilized as yet. And has been, though we got the information post uh, uh, implementation of the uh, Motor Vehicle Act, we have the information post August 2019 till December uh, 2019. And we see that there has been a reduction in accident related deaths and accidents. Uh, after the implementation of the uh, Motor Vehicle Act, the, thereafter, the data hasn't really been coming in. So, you know, if we want to study the impact of COVID, we are not at this point in a position, we are following up very closely with the state governments. And uh, this aspect does remain a challenge. Uh, the data once received from the state governments is aggregated based on the soft versions received and the report brought out. Amongst the various challenges, as I mentioned by TRW, is non-receipt of information in a timely manner from the states, state governments. There is a need for capacity building in the police stations to understand the formats and to fill them and how to fill them and fill them up correctly. Workshops for capacity building by their police are required for this purpose, which are undertaken by the ministry from time to time. In order to bring out the report in a timely fashion, TR, TRW has recently, earlier on, this used to all happen manually. So we had started, we had requested NIC to develop a software whereby, you know, the state governments could feed in the data at the state level and the reports required by us would come out, would, there would be an automatic generation of the report. That software is now ready, but it is yet to be tested and has been delayed because of COVID. It may be mentioned out here that stay, all states, the data accident machinery are at different stages. While there are some states, states where we have very sophisticated and advanced software available, there are other states where, you know, there is, a, a, which are struggling to bring out this information. So the report does get delayed for that reason. The upshot of the foregoing discussion is that accident at present is sourced from the police departments in India. The police is the first responder in accidents and is considered to be the best source of data, even though there are other sources like hospitals and state transport departments, insurance departments, etc. Even internationally, as per WTO's global status report, almost 50% of the reporting countries source their data from police, with 7% sourcing it from the health departments and another 11% sourcing it from transport departments. Amongst the critiques, so what I want to stress is that we are doing pretty much what is happening in the uh, internationally. I mean, largely happening, but there is, this is not the end of the story. Now the, now the basic critiques of the existing system, I'll place before you. There is a 
that you know there is a variation in respect of accident data reported by police hospitals and transport departments and uh, uh sorry there is a variation in the data reported by police and the hospitals and the tra transport department at the district at uh, level at the state level and at the national level so there is no unique figure on data and there is a need to integrate and link the above databases at all the three levels this is a very pressing need to have the most credible figure on uh data we need to have all the various institutions the user agencies the reporting agencies on accidents connected uh, 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 linked this is also in line with the systemic solution to road safety which has now been found to be an effective solution in some nordic countries wherein all user agencies are enabled to act in a coordinated fashion so this is one of the crying need of the current system there is a there is there has been also this critique that there is a possibility of under reporting of fatalities because the deaths that take place in hospitals after 30 days will not get reported if the police and hospital data is not linked i mean this is just to give an example of how the linkage is necessary that the data collected by police is not evidence based i am talking about the various critiques it it says that you know the data which is collected by police is not evidence based as the policeman who goes to the spot would normally record the data after returning depending on his memory that that the data recorded is not dynamic and is not available to the user departments on a real time basis so uh there are other uh, critiques that if you know police data uh, is often limited to the question asked in the trw uh, format doesn't give you a very holistic information that a data collected by the police you know suffers is affected by their value judgment and the biases of the policemen that the data collected often does not provide inputs on the real time condition of the road to enable road engineers to take on the mainstream work etc etc so there are people do have issues with this the existing system of reporting it is to address the these criticisms that morth has formulated the irad project the integrated road accident project under world bank assistance ministry is working very seriously on this uh, technical support for this project is being rendered by iit madras and nixi in the first phase of this project of this irad uh, irad project it will be implemented as a pilot in six states of tamil nadu rajasthan karnataka mp bihar and up implementation in these states is to begin shortly the software is ready basically the project involves capture of road accidents what the project is basically the project involves capture of road accidents and geotagging the same through a trap tablet provided to the first responder which is the police so the police fellow will go with this tablet take a photograph of the uh, 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 of the accident geotag all the necessary details the software of the project would provide back end an analytics it would uh, you know uh, provide the back end analytics and simultaneous linkage with multiple users as in hospitals ambulance blood banks wahan sarthi nhai courts insurance companies whatever all the important user agencies near real time syncing and updation of database will happen with this project as well as they are planning to develop a mobile application for the same uh so this is the irad project which is supposed to be a very uh you know uh uh sort of uh, the most is the state of art and the most sophisticated system and will overcome all the deficiencies that are existing in the current system of data collection 
Amongst the other initiatives that the ministry has taken is there is another very important initiative. Uh, uh, the ministry uh, in the last, over the last year has identified 5,590 black spots for the year 2018 based on the data provided by 30 states. Our current public, we are hoping to bring out some information in the, in the report of 2019 on black spots. And uh, one state and five UTs are, to still, are still to supply this information. As per the definition provided by the engineering wing of black spot is defined as a stretch of about 500 meters or national highway or any other category of road over which five accidents or 10 fatalities have taken place over the last three years. So this exercise was started after I joined by me in full earnest because I felt this was would be a very, this was a very key intervention and would be very strategic at, as it would help us focus our attention on some key black spots for reducing accidents. And uh, it has taken us almost two years to collect this information on black spots because the states had to be explained the methodology and they had to do a lot of work at their end to get this information together. The, only information available for the ministry before this was pertained to the years 2011 and 13, and there was no exact change available for that, for those black spots. The information that we have called for now has information in respect of the change and uh, the police stations is, and is quite specific. And these black spots have now been shared with uh, the key implementing agencies, that is NHAI, NHI, DCL, and MORT engineers, and uh, to enable them to take, undertake rectification efforts. Uh, what they are doing, they have started by classifying these black spots on in, uh, you know, by uh, organizing them, which need short-term interventions and what need long-term interventions. Short-term interventions would mean things like rumble strips, uh, you know, lighting, putting signages, and the long-term uh, measures would require key design changes and elevation change like road widening, building of road over bridges, bypass, flyover, cattle underpass, etc. So now this is something which is, this is being reviewed in a very systematic manner by the Honorable Minister. And the entire exercise of black spot reduction is being undertaken in a very serious manner. This is a huge step I would suggest. Uh, amongst the other initiative which has been taken by TRW, uh, which the World uh, WHO Global Safety Report talks about, you know, that data should be available, uh, uh, integrated data should be available. We have taken a step on that. They also talk about carrying out a socioeconomic cost study and, uh, you know, to enable uh, countries to do a cost benefit uh, comparison of, uh, of various investment measures. So uh, I'm happy to report that, uh, uh, you know, we had, um, uh, had ministry had commissioned the consortium of Delhi IIT and DIMITS to carry out a study on the estimation of socioeconomic cost of accidents. And uh, the study has since been completed and is under the consideration of the government. The study provides inter alia the cost of socioeconomic accidents as a percentage of GDP under various scenarios. It also provides a framework for estimating socioeconomic cost of accidents and provides the directions in which investments related to road safety should be made. It also briefly touches upon the how to improve, improve the quality of data and detail, details of data collection. Um, I would leave it at this because the study is currently under the consideration of the ministry. 
and we'll, uh, we'll, we will soon put it in the public domain. Uh, once it's once the uh, key uh, we have accepted the report um, the there are many other initiatives which are in the pipeline i'm not even talking about the technology technological innovations which have been underway um, i am just uh, the government is working on the uh, scrapping policy and cashless treatment to victims and but that is that the ministry is doing and uh, soon there would be many many more initiatives that will come to light and you have seen the motor vehicle amendment act in the last year so with this i would like to uh, conclude my presentation on the subject of uh, data and uh, we can take questions uh, thank you ma'am for very you are very interesting uh... Uh, narration about what TRW is doing with reference to data collection and uh, giving us the details of the four reports what uh, uh, you are publishing every year. Uh, are these reports available on your website? Anybody can access? Yes, yes, they are. These reports are all available on the ministry's website yeah. under the publications head. Okay. So you'll find them all. I mean, year-wise, they are given. Since okay. the time, you know, they've been published oh, here. That's great. Uh, the other question I have is, uh, you mentioned that um, all the data, what is uh, what you are uh, getting and com getting compiled into these report is based on the uh, police records. Yes. So do you have any assessment as to what would be the percentage of this uh, I mean, uh, accident information you are covering with reference to the total accidents that may be happening. Because many accidents don't get reported to police. Yes, that aspect is there. That's, you know, we, we haven't got any study. Uh, you know, this aspect we haven't really covered. We believe that we, the information that we received is fairly comprehensive. It is for all the 30 states, 36 states and UTs coming from the nodal officers of the police departments. So we haven't gone into this aspect, though there are a lot of, you know, we do find it in literature that globally also, that, you know, yeah, the reports right. brought out by police are, as I mentioned, that there is underreporting because if, you, if they are not linked, especially with the hospitals, there is a chance that, you know, people who are dying are 30 days after uh, being admitted into the hospital, do not find a mention in the police records because the police records are FIR based and uh, those medical legal cases, what kind of linkage is maintained between the, you know, uh, the, the police departments and the hospitals, it's important for that data to be really authentic. And that's why we are getting into the IRAD system and we will try to link the data in the first place with all the important user agencies. It's a great initiative by MWOT uh, to work on this uh, IRAD project, as you mentioned. Uh, what is your estimate about when it will become Pan India? And uh, uh, that uh, you know, yes, uh, Pan India. It's it might take a little time, but you know, I am not the one who is actually going. Is uh, it is the ministry which is doing this project. So that's why I had suggested that maybe you should get somebody from the ministry to talk on the subject on the timelines. But okay. I am aware that, you know, this, uh, the, the, the six pilot states, they are going to start with the pilot states in about a month or two's time. And it has got a little delayed because of COVID, you know, because the state machinery is completely light right now, diverted with uh, with uh, uh, you know controlling COVID, so uh, this is about it. And maybe some somebody who's actually involved uh, with with the project should talk to you on the okay. details of that. We'll do that. Uh, maybe another. Question, yeah. The other question related to this I have is: Is uh, TRW or the ministry uh, thinking of? Uh, achieving a status when we'll be able to uh, access the data real time. 
more or less in the sense maybe exactly. because all these components you see are part of irat where they do it on a they they are given the policemen will be given a tablet they'll capture the data there and then you see and there the entire system analytics starts working and the entire report will get updated oh immediately you know, immediately it will be oh. real time syncing it will be real time syncing in fact there is you know there is something called as in himachal pradesh they already have the transport research laboratories uh, experiment is going on in himachal pradesh where they have part of this initiative is being implemented and it has been implemented for a few years now so this is what it will be real time data which will come to you so it's it's going to be a huge effort so it would take time i imagine when you are linking up various uh, you know it will th that's why the software creation it will be a very sophisticated software which will could be created so we have to wait i suppose the in the meantime question. in the meantime you have the road accident reports published by us yeah yeah that's right yes so the other question i have is uh, 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 is the ministry also working on how to improve what all data is captured by the police complaints by the so that it would help us analyze the accidents better no i i'm sorry i didn't get your question no no i what i meant was uh, right now the police complaints uh, to which we are getting this data about accidents doesn't give full details which would be help uh, the any analyst to analyze the cause of an accident so my question was is the ministry working on improving this uh, reporting no, uh, uh, i don't quite get this question you know because i think i did even what do you mean by analyzing the cause of accident the cause of accident is there are multiple causes happening there are yeah. multiple causes happening at a point yes. and what do you mean by analyzing the cause of accident the chapter 3 of road accident report we have a detailed questionnaire this to you which brings brings out the it is called the cause of accidents you know reasons i'll just read out give me a moment yeah causes of road accidents that is chapter 3 of the report and under that we have various causes have been given and it has been over speeding has been identified as the most important cause even globally if you look at who report they are just concentrating on uh, you know over speeding and drunken driving these are the two important causes in terms of human error you know like yeah. the whole thinking on road acc accidents has been evolving now they say it's a systems approach you can't really Uh, you know pin down a person you can't really say that so and so it was responsible however these standardized reports you know we told i to mention that the data that we call for are a part of the aprad system of the uns cap it's a standardized form of reporting and chapter 3 brings out various causes if it is over speeding if it is drunken driving if it is driving on the wrong side of the road if it is jumping the red light if it is using use of mobile phone it brings out all this information but you know there may be something else as well there may be a pothole also you so there are multiple causes the road situation may be bad so unless the whole the the whole thing is studied in a systemic manner you can't improve further detail on this information so i would urge um, all the people present in the seminar to please look at the report in greater detail and these causes have been analyzed and of course they are based on the police feedback so it is also analyzing the road environment you know where we look at what are the things like you know uh, where the accident happened was it, whether it was a residential area whether it was a commercial area whether it's an institutional area whether it's a t junction whether it's a y junction is it happening at junctions that is happening uh, 
or some other place and whether it's a steep uh, grade road whether they are hitting any other vehicle in the side lane so all these aspects there are various uh, aspects you know which are analyzed now further improvement to this data this is of course based only on police feedback and it's in a way unidimensional but to capture the entirety of that accident we need greater information and more integrated and systemic approach which is we are on the way to getting there i hope i have made myself clear yeah thank you thanks for your explanation hmm. uh, swati any more any more questions from audience uh yeah so uh, there are a couple of questions uh, that we wanted to cover um so ma'am one of the questions was about the 2019 report uh, do we have any uh, update on when to expect it to be released and is there anything new that's going to be covered in the 2019 report yeah yeah i mentioned uh, i mentioned right in the beginning we are hoping to complete it by september because of covid it might go into early part of october mm -hmm. and uh, uh we will be bringing in some new components i mean i for once have now decided that i must add a chapter uh, we will be writing about the black spots there will be the impact of the motor vehicle accident system in that i want to add up there if we get something on covid we might do that but it's that seems like unlikely i don't promise on covid and uh, 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 we will be giving uh, you know on the methodology i am going to give you some input this time because i i learned from uh, you know your uh, uh, your questions i think there is need to put this out in the report you know in a straight jacketed fashion we need to bring out uh, you know the way the methodology of our collection that should be a chapter and so this is it this is going to be it and on black spots i think that will be very major because we of course we have about 5590 we have identified as of now but we won't be able to put out all the details in this report because the report is a little you know it's supposed to be a slim document so we'll just bring out the top 10 accident spots in uh, all states where for them to focus their attention on the on those spots so the entire state machinery national machinery you know that can be focused on rectification of those black spots that is what i mean uh, this is what my plan is as of now uh, let's hope we are able to do it and uh, that's where we are thank you ma'am um so uh, one more thing we, i wanted to discuss about is that we have a couple of interns who are doing some programs on collecting data in their lo local areas and um, uh, suggesting some policy changes so for those people uh, they have been asking about if there's any kind of standards they have to follow to collect data is there any uh, standards that you guys follow which we could uh, provide direction to our interns as well our you know the formats in which we collect reports are also available on the net on the ministry of morth site they can they are welcome to take a look at that and basically anything when you are looking for data you are guided by the area of your interest you'll have to devise your own questions and uh, go along that way so uh, and but i really don't think see the kind of data we bring to you is national level data and uh, even uh, you know i was told that um, uh, jp and all are just doing i think uh, just a few states they are concentrated okay. only in a few city yes yes so you know we are bringing you pan india data and i think i should have you know we need to publicize the road transport accident data a lot more of course i mean there is always scope for improvement in my pre in my uh, you know introduction i have requested people and the all the user agencies to come back to us on with suggestions for improvements you know in the preface i have mentioned in the last paragraph that please do um, you know come back to us with your suggestions and uh, uh, that is it that is it okay uh so uh, the uh, the question on my question i have for you is regarding the cost of life uh, so i think uh, there is some work being done regarding cost of life with iit delhi uh, so can you like to talk a little about that initiative i did mention i when i was speaking to you on the socio economic cost study 
I gave you a little brief towards the end on the socioeconomic cost study. And uh, this study was given to Delhi IIT and to DIMIC, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And they have, we have just completed this study. We were, you know, like very closely steering this study. And uh, the uh, study has been completed. It is under the consideration of the government. They have brought out, you know, what is going to be the, the study brings out a few things. One is on the socioeconomic cost of accidents at the national level. I would not like to go into the details at this stage because it is this uh, report is still under submission. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would just like to just tell you the areas on which they have gone. They have given the socioeconomic cost of accidents as a percentage of GDP. They have also given the framework. By framework, they have estimated the unit cost of accident. For instance, if a person, if a pedestrian dies, uh, you know, in an accident, if he dies, what is the cost to, what is the socioeconomic cost to the country? If, uh, 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 what do you call, if he gets injured, what is the socioeconomic cost? If there is a, a car accident, what is the socioeconomic cost? So every category of uh, accident has been estimated, the cost has been estimated. So there is a framework which has, which the study has given. And, uh, 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 besides this, the study also talks about, has made recommendations um, in the, uh, you know, uh, in uh, respect of areas where further investments need to be made. I can share with you that seems to be, uh, you know, uh, they've also suggested things like, you know, that hospitals should follow uh, the, uh, you should, you know, uh, use the international classification of diseases coding system for recording injury so that you know because once the once an injured goes to the hospital they'll just give any any number for it to be internationally comparable we need to the hospitals also need to follow international coding so this aspect we have to take up with the ministry of health and family welfare so uh, there are such things you know then they the study also recommends linkage of data you know it only talks about linking of hospital and uh, uh, police data, but we are going to take up linking up data under IRAD amongst various users. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's where I would like to, you know, at this point leave uh, the socioeconomic cost study. So this was one of the key things which the, uh, you know, for us to, because it helps decision making, you know, once you know if at a point there are a thousand people dying and you have the, socioeconomic cost of that black spot, you know, then you know whether you need to go in for such a big intervention or not. It helps you to do a cost benefit analysis of investment decisions. It makes it easier for you. Mm -hmm. So the study, I hope, uh, uh, will be in the public domain very soon and uh, uh, for you all to share, see it and share. In any case, it's Delhi IIT which has done the study and uh, uh, that's, I would like to leave it at that. Perfect. Uh, so also, ma'am, I, uh, I wanted to uh, ask you one last question. I think we got this from the audience. Uh, so uh, is there any, even with respect to the, uh, the program, the new initiative that you were talking about, or even the current system, is there any program that is going on with respect to training the reporting agency, that is the, the police writer, um, to have some kind of standards in reporting? Can I, can I, I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? Uh, is there any initiative to train the, uh, the police writers, that is the person who uh, uh, reports the accident, um, to follow certain standards on the reporting? Yes, yes, you know, the ministry has been holding workshops. I mean, in the, uh, you know, I know there were some uh, workshops. The ministry does this, okay? It's not TRW. The ministry, the transport division of the ministry, they have these regular sessions and there were four, four workshops created in Delhi in various IITs. I, I at least recall last year that, you know, where the police personnel were given detailed training in ASCII in the administrative staff college of Hyderabad, these trainings were held. And so there, there is this effort is going on because policemen also keep changing and it has to be, a, you know, the capacity building has to be a routine and a regular affair so uh, this is part of the safety efforts being undertaken by the ministry I, 
the best person to talk about it but yes i know that this is being done okay so uh, we had one more question uh, coming in saying is there any initiative to uh, you know collect the data from the cameras installed uh, now in a lot of areas the cctv cameras the the police department i mean you know i i'm sorry i won't be able to answer that question i you know uh, it is the police department which will have the data we haven't you know that is a matter of each acts that is only to raise a challan you know basically to uh, the uh, the cameras the cameras which have been uh, installed in the cctv basically i think that is to raise a ticket in case of over speeding by the by the by the uh, by the public and that data regarding how many challans have been offered since we don't ask for the data i don't have more information on this i don't think i am in a position to ask for this information okay so uh, is there any um, uh, Uh, so one question was why is there a difference between ncrb data and tw data why tr trw data and ncrb data no i think it's different time periods and in fact you know i must share with you that uh, uh, we recently had a meeting with mha we were trying to study the cctns system the crime and criminal tracking uh, system to understand you know because that is uh, under cctns all uh, police stations have been linked and uh, they have about five formats in which they call for information out of which <laughs> out of which only two formats there is some information on road accident data so they address maybe 20% of the questions which trw ask for we were trying to we were we have been in the process of you know trying to see if we can subsume this uh, the information trw calls for within the cctna system that is still under study you know to come out of it i am not able to uh, guess at this point but uh, it will also depend on uh, but there are issues with it there are issues with it and uh, ncrb data i think the periods are different uh, and why they are giving you different data i need, i haven't really seen it uh, i'm sorry i can't really uh, give the difference uh, between ncrb data and our data i need to take a look at it i haven't really seen this aspect probably need to examine it you know mm-hmm. and also also you know uh, uh, um there's a loss of information also you know the the ncrb data and the crime data they are talking about crime they give road accidents they give air acts air traffic accidents rail accidents uh, suicides so you know i mean i don't know what figure you been looking at all right so they are focus is on crime mm-hmm. and uh, what we are looking at is only road accidents so i need to take a closer look on this and we'll do once i get back thank you ma'am uh, so we have one more question that came in saying that uh, is does the road statistics of uh, uh, the report that you're talking about does it also have a consolidated data on the road conditions uh, is there like some kind of a rating system on the road condition itself and the road connectivity or road network i mean you know so it's a struggle to bring out the data that we bring i mean you know <laughs> uh, we haven't gone that far as to bring out on the quality of the roads uh, no we haven't been reporting but there is something there is information we see on potholes and stuff like that you know we do examine the potholes data it was that was uh, based on the supreme court you see there are a lot of concerns which the supreme court uh, committee also flags and which we have over time and the parliament that raises questions on those issues so once an issue takes dominance we try to build it in our report you know for instance uh, you would have heard that you know <clears throat> uh for instance uh, the that 5% of the roads are accounted for by the national highways and the state highways and they account for about 64% of the fatalities and uh, the supreme court committee had uh, wanted to know the details of who these people are who are dying on the national highways 
And so we, this time, are going to go into this. Yes, I will depend on the data if we get it. We'll, this will be another additional feature which will be covered in this report, where we give, we, we bring out more granular information on the type of people dying on national highways and state highways, that demarcation, because that, that jurisdictional uh, demarcation was important to enable these agencies to take the necessary corrective action. So I think that that's, uh, that's, uh, that will be the progress that this report will show. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so you, uh, you have given us a wonderful session. Uh, um, so uh, uh, to just add, end the session or conclude the session, if you could give us some pointers on how we can contribute from Indian Road Safety Campaign, students, volunteers, all of us, how we can contribute uh, to health, transport, bridging, road safety, and the collection of data itself. Um, as I mentioned right in the beginning, I've been very impressed with your organization and uh, the way you have a marketing department. You, you know, you, you're playing a wonderful role in advocacy and I wish you to continue these series over time and take this role forward. This will be, of course, one part of it. With your engineering skills and your software skills, there's a lot more you can do. And perhaps you could also look at, you know, you could take on pilots and do studies and there is there are so many demands in the system and you know i would just like to say this that it's unfair to expect that the trw can answer the design the data requirements with respect to design of vehicles everyone has to do their bit of research and if you feel that something is of such enormous importance and should be studied then you should write to trw for including that data so, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Rao mentioned that, you know, there are studies which show that people are, you know, um, not wearing seat belts and the, uh, what do you call? Uh, helmets. Sorry? Helmets, helmets. Helmets uh, are not being, uh, that enforcement is bad. Now, for that, you know, in fact, there is this thing for how do you study enforcement? How many fines have been issued by states? in respect of, you know, wearing of seat belts, probably we should study that, you know, we should look at how many fines have been issued by the police departments for, uh, uh, you know, for non wearing of helmets, for non wearing of uh, seat belts. This is one element of query, but somebody is to write to us, I can't sue more to take it on uh, myself. Already the police, uh, you know, stations are crying, they're saying they're being overloaded with information requirements of uh, safety. So I cannot so more to do it. If you think something is so terribly important, you must write to us asking for it, or it should get raised in the parliament, or it's, you know, then it can be made a part of the query schedule. We have to keep it lean and thin so that the, you know, the information, we don't overload, overload the police stations. In fact, we started to talk and to MHA on CCTNS to see that, you know, because they supply information to CCTNS also. So there is an additional set of information and parameters which is provided to CCTNS. Anyway, so much about it. So talking about the role of, um, uh, you know, the role of IRTC for, uh, uh, you know, um, IR, uh, sorry, IRSC for in this campaign. I think you can, you know, with your, you should see what your skill sets are. Advocacy is a very good area that you people have gotten into. And uh, with your software knowledge, if you want to get into some studies and, you know, uh, but you know, anything which is very organized, I can't see, we can, what I want to say is that uh, NGOs are the best suited for advocacy. And that is, you can take it to such big lengths. And one of the key things in, in the case of, you know, road safety is to, uh, to change the behavioral change. And that can be best addressed with advocacy, I feel. So I would like to leave it at that. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, I'll uh, hand the uh, stage over to Amar, who uh, will give us a thank you note, and then we can end the session. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Thank you, Swati, uh, and thank you, ma'am, for your excellent insights on the topic, and thank you, sir, for hosting the session wonderfully, as always.
so uh, yeah indian road safety campaign i think we have been uh, helping ministry of road transport and highways on a lot of fronts including some of the technical work that we did around data collection but uh, yeah definitely we'll work on your suggestions ma'am and it would be grateful in case we can sort of connect sometime later and talk out a plan as to how through different iits that we are connected with if we can also the uh, volunteer support can help in some pilots as you rightly mentioned and do the case studies uh, so that maybe could you sort of contribute to capacity building of uh, uh, you know uh, of the police constables yeah yeah definitely uh, so we have been working with aims etc so we can definitely help on that uh, uh, on uh, in terms of first responder as well as in terms of technical cap uh, like if technical capability uh, enhancement is required that is also something that we can definitely look into thank you very much thank you ma'am thank you thank you sir Thank you everyone have a nice day thank time. you bye bye